p.m. will dodge the new recession. The economy will suffer a heavy blow as a consequence of the lockdowns afflicting three states, but Treasury and the Reserve Bank believe a second recession in as many years will be avoided, Scott Morrison says, with his government being blamed for the economy destroying lockdowns because of the slow vaccine rollout, the Prime Minister also ramped up pressure on the scientific panel, whose advice to restrict AstraZeneca to over 50s and then over 60s torpedoed the inoculation program. Well, that's a very good point. Phil Curry, mm. who's written that, once again uh, gets the chockies because he's, he's nailed that narrative there. Well, yeah, and this is one of the things, is, I mean, you know, a Taji or a Targi or whatever they call it, um, uh, has, has helped to whip up this fear of AstraZeneca, which most of the UK was given. Now, I think in the UK, if you were under 30, they gave you Pfizer. But most of the UK has been given AstraZeneca. The UK is now open. They've had Freedom Day. They're doing quite all right. Their, their case numbers are rising, but the deaths aren't necessarily rising. You know, they are going about life as normal. We saw at Wimbledon, the woman who created the AstraZeneca vaccine got up and was given a standing ovation. Now, if she came to Australia, you'd probably have people throwing tomatoes at her. And you throw into that, you know, that uh, silly Jeanette young woman you've got up there in Queensland, your public health officer who's out there saying, oh, if young people get AstraZeneca, they're more likely to die than they have COVID, which is a lie. I mean, this is, this is all of the things that have contributed to this happening. Uh, and I just hope, going to the first point of that story about uh, recessions that we don't end up in another recession. I mean, the, the economic effects of these lockdowns are immense, particularly when there isn't a great deal of compensation uh, that, that comes with it. The federal government has stepped in to, to give some help, but it's ultimately the states that decide to go into lockdown. And if the states go into lockdown without offering compensation to the people they've told can no longer trade, that is hardly fair. The advertiser, Double Jeopardy's the splash. Uh, a story here, uh, South Australia's COVID-19 outbreak of the highly infectious Delta variant has more than doubled to 12 cases after two super spreader events at a popular winery and a city restaurant in a statement late on Wednesday, the first full day of the state's third lockdown. Authorities reveal six new cases, including a child linked to the Modbury cluster. Another new case was revealed earlier in the day. What's going on over there, uh, Caleb, in Adelaide? Well, you know, it sounds scary when you say the cases have doubled, but we are talking about going from 6 to 12. It's not a massive growth. And the great thing about all of this is that the cases they have found are all linked. We, we don't have unlinked cases of community transmission in South Australia at the moment. Because I think we have an excellent contact tracing system in here. It pains me uh, that uh, the Chief Public Health Officer, Nicola Spurrier, and our Premier, Stephen Marshall, and Police Commissioner Grant Stevens don't trust that contact tracing system enough to not go into lockdown. But I think we have one of the best contact tracing systems in the country, and it does a very good job of finding infected people very quickly and putting a ring around them. And that's exactly what it's doing at the moment. They've found six new cases today but they are all linked. They know where they were. Uh, so it, it's not as though we've got what's going on in New South Wales where there are cases popping up willy-nilly and they don't know where they came from. And they know where it all is. Uh, SA is in a very good position. And I would just like to note as well that further on in the paper, we have a story about the fact that calls to the SA COVID-19 mental health hotline today on the first day of lockdown spiked by 4 Hundred percent. This is what lockdowns wow. do. It's what they. That's what they do to people. You know, there are people out there tonight in South Australia who don't know where their next paycheck is going to come from. Who will be struggling to feed their children, to pay their rent, to pay their power bills. Is it any wonder that the number of people who are worried enough about their mental health to call a COVID-19 mental health hotline today spiked by four hundred percent on the first? day of lockdown. I'd be interested to know what it's like on day seven. 